Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about CSS custom properties, or as they're more often referred to, CSS variables. CSS variables are a way for you within your CSS files to create a value that can be reused in multiple places. So before we jump in too deep, let's start by jumping into a style sheet here in Oxygen under Manage Style Sheets and looking at how to define a CSS variable. You can find a CSS variable on any selector, but usually it's a good idea to do it on like the root selector like this, and we'll open and close our curly braces there. Now to define a CSS variable, you have to start the name of the variable with two dashes. Let me swap this editor theme over for visibility. So if I want a CSS variable, for my background color, for instance, I could do dash dash background. And then I declare a value for this variable. In this case, we'll just do white. And then we'll do one called foreground and we'll do black. So this is the most basic way to set up CSS variables. Now here's how to use them within Oxygen. So we have it in our style sheet here and we wanna use these colors on our elements. Now, what we can do is we can go down here to this section and our background color, we can do VAR, open parenthesis, dash dash, background, and then close the parenthesis. And you'll notice that our design gets a little weird because this is definitely not a valid color until we close that out. Now let's try changing this to foreground so you can actually see what it's doing. And you can see that it's using that foreground color for us. So let's set up a few of these on this little element I've designed here. Let's do background on this. And then for the text color on these, let's do var foreground. And I'm just gonna copy and paste that across these other elements. And also my button color, I want it to be the same thing. So you can see everything is black and white now. Let's save this. I wanna open up the front end so that we can see exactly what's going on here in a minute. And one thing that we can do here is because CSS variables respect the cascade, we can actually override the CSS variables later to achieve different effects. So for instance, we could go back into our style sheet here and we could use a selector such as a class named invert. And then we could do something like this. We could redeclare our CSS variables, background, and make our background black, and we can make our foreground white. And why would we do something like that? Well, I will show you. If we go over here and select our section and apply that invert class, you can see that all of our colors are now inverted because we redeclared those variables on this section. So these variables respect the cascade. Let's jump up to the front end and just look a little bit closer here. So if we look in the inspector, let's select our section here, and you can see that our background color is their background, which is black in this case. But if we scroll down, you can see that the variables declared on our root are being overridden. That's because our later declaration on the invert class is more specific, and so it overrides the original values. So this is actually a really cool way to get a completely different look for something without having to go through and redesign it. You can just add a class with some redeclared CSS variables and just like that, you have a different look. Let's go ahead and give this the background variable here so that we can see that text. So then you could add or remove this invert class as needed on elements that you wanted to manipulate in that way. So let's go ahead and remove this class and let's go back to our normal colors. Another thing you can do with CSS variables is you can actually use Oxygen's global colors within your CSS variables. So let's open this up and let's go to manage settings and go into global colors here. So to use these global colors in our CSS variables, what we could do is we could change this color value to whatever we want our background color to be. And you can see over here in our global color list, each color has an ID. 
And we're gonna use this ID to reference these colors. So on the root, we'll set the background to color, open and close parentheses, and then let's make the background off-white. So we'll do color three. And you can see we're now using that kind of yellowish off-white. And then for the foreground, we can choose any other color we want, like color two or color five or color four. So in this way, you're able to kind of layer things on. And even though you're using Oxygen's global color system, which essentially works very similarly to CSS variables, in cases where you need to write custom CSS, but you want to use variables and you also want to use the global colors that your site already has set up, this is a nice little trick to be able to do that. Now, one final thing I wanna show you and something that's a little bit more of an advanced use case is that you can use CSS variables and combine them using special CSS functions to achieve certain results. So for instance, we could have something like a width variable, and this could be something like 50%. And then we could have a gap variable, and this could be something like 32 pixels. And then we could have a combined variable which gives us a value of calc var width minus var gap times two. So now this combined variable will have a value of 50% minus 32 pixels times two. And the nice thing about using our calculation in this way and this third CSS variable that we set up is that we can have these advanced formulas, which this one's not particularly advanced, but you can have much more advanced formulas with a lot of CSS variables mixed in. And when you need to change a value, for instance, the gap, you can just change it up here and it's a lot easier to deal with than having to go in and actually modify that formula. Now, how would you actually use something like this? Let's go ahead and set up a real example. So let's close out our style sheet for a minute and let's consider a section with nothing in it. Let's get rid of that and let's add some divs and we'll call these square. And we're gonna go ahead and give them a background color of this dark green. And then let's give them a height of something like 300 pixels. And let's say we have three of these. And let's lay this out horizontally. Now let's go into our style sheet again and let's start manipulating these a little bit. So these are called square. And let's set the width to 33.33%. Those will fill up 100% of the width. Now let's assume we want some kind of a gap between them. So let's do a square and then plus square. So only squares that come after another square will have a margin left of 10 pixels. Now you can see here that Flexbox is kind of taking care of things for us, but if we duplicate this and we have four, let's go ahead and duplicate this so we have six, right? And say we want this to wrap around to the next section or the next row, we can go to advanced layout and we can ensure that we allow our flex items to wrap. And now you can see why our layout looks a little goofy. So let's go back to our style sheet here and we can solve this problem with our CSS variables. So let's go back up here and do something like we had before with 33.33% gap, it's gonna be 10 pixels. And then let's just do final width, which will be a calc with 33.33% minus, and there's gonna be two of these gaps per row ideally, so we need their gap times two, which is essentially gonna equal 20 pixels. And then of course back here, we don't wanna hard code that value. What am I thinking? Let's go back here and drop in our their width. Okay, so now what we can do is we can set the width of these elements to our final width variable. And let's see what happens, var final width. And you can see that now we have a much better looking layout. We're gonna have three squares per row, even though we have that gap, which actually increases the width a bit. And then this, we can actually, uh, this margin left value, we can actually replace that with our gap variable. So var gap. 
And then of course we have a problem here with this fourth child where it finally wraps having uh, some space on the left too. We can actually solve that with a not nth child four and that gives us our nicely spaced squares. And then we might also want some margin on the bottom of these so we could do margin bottom 10 pixels or better yet, var gap. So now that we've used this variable across multiple locations, we can go up here and adjust our gap, which is going to affect not only our final width, which we use to declare the width of the squares, and it uses those within the calculation here, but also our left and bottom gaps. So let's set this to something like 20 pixels. And you can see that everything just adjusts beautifully. But we don't want that wide of a gap, so let's go back down to 10 or maybe 16. So now we have a nicely spaced grid of squares using CSS variables. Now there's a ton more you can do with CSS variables. This is really just a brief introduction to what they are and how to use them within Oxygen. Now one more thing I wanna note is that you can use these CSS variables within Oxygen's GUI like we did with colors, but we can also use pixel values and things like that. So let's comment this stuff out and let's remember our gap variable. So let's go into say this square and let's remove these other ones. We don't need all these for this example. And let's say we wanna add a margin right using that gap variable. We can actually do that within oxygen. So what we need to do is we need to select the unit for the input where we wanna use it and make sure it's set to none. The none unit literally outputs no unit, which allows you to use CSS functions like var and clamp and other things. So in this case, we can do var gap. And you can see it works like a charm. And you can use any CSS variable that you've declared in your style sheet in the GUI in this way. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's just a brief look at CSS variables and how to use them within Oxygen. Thank you very much for watching.